the total resistance r radiated plus r loss is less than one ohm for the short dipole. Many transmission lines have characteristic impedances on the order of 50 ohms or 75 ohms, I'll say often. So it's not going to be easy to match a short dipole to a typical transmission line. Considering the low efficiency and also the low impedance of the short dipole, it seems that we need to improve our antenna design. And one of the easiest things we can do is just lengthen the arms of the antenna. Let's lengthen them and consider instead a half wave dipole. Lambda over two is the total length. And see if whether it might be easier to match to a transmission line and also see if it's more efficient. For the short wave dipole, let's assume that the current distribution along the dipole is I naught cosine omega t, so it varies sinusoidally, and then also there's an amplitude distribution with position z. And so in phasor form, it looks like this right here. Notice the kz, cosine kz, did not convert to an exponential in phasor form, and this is because this cosine kz, in this case, does not indicate a phase change based on position. It's a coefficient to help us determine the magnitude of the current based on the position on the antenna. So in other words, we're still assuming the phase of the current does not change with position on the antenna, just as we did for a short dipole. We want to calculate R radiated and R loss for this half wave dipole. And to do this, we can follow the same steps as we did for the short dipole. I'll go through this quickly because we've done it before for the short dipole. First, we need to calculate the far electric fields produced by the half wave dipole by dividing the dipole into infinitesimally short segments. And each of these segments is going to be approximated as a Hertzian dipole radiating into the far field like this. Same as before with the short dipole. Then the entire half wave dipole integrates, radiates into the far field, this expression where we integrate z equals minus lambda over 4 to lambda over 4 dE theta. So we'd plug that in. When we perform this integration, there's a few differences here compared to a short dipole. For the magnitude, we can approximate r prime which goes from the infinitesimally short segment to our observation point, say Q right here, we can say R is about equal to R. But for the phase, we cannot say R is about equal, R prime is about equal to R. That's too crude of a, an approximation because as a rule of thumb, the phase error greater than pi over eight is not okay. it's unacceptable. The reason this is a problem for the phase is that when we divide up the antenna into a stack of Hertzian dipoles, the fields produced by each Hertzian dipole is phase shifted because of the different propagation distances between the Hertzian dipole and the position of interest, here point Q. For a half wave dipole, K times R, this distance, is uh, can be greater than kr prime by more than pi over 8, this threshold. So the propagation differences from this point is going to be uh, too much uh, of a difference than if we were to assume this radiating element was occurring at the origin. So in this case, it's better to use a parallel ray approximation where we, assay, we say r prime is equal to r minus z cosine theta. To, after performing this integration, if we use numerical integration, we're going to get this expression here. So then we can calculate the power density by plugging in here the magnitude of the electric field. Here's s from the previous slide, and we can integrate this 
over the surface of a sphere of radius one meter in order to find the total radiated power. So we plug that in right here for r equal one. And if we did this, we would get 36.6 .6 i naught squared watts. And then we could calculate r radiated is two p radiated over i naught squared. This is from just from an equation for a resistor and we would get 73 ohms. This 73 ohm radiation resistance of the half wave dipole is important because it is easy to match this antenna to a 75 ohm transmission line. Now to be able to calculate the efficiency of this half wave dipole we also need to know the loss resistance. And so for this, we can use the same equation we came up with earlier. And in this case, the integration limits are gonna be from minus pi, uh, lambda over four to lambda over four, the full length of the half wave dipole. And this integral evaluates to lambda over two times I naught squared. And since lambda is CF is 0.125 meters, we're going to get our loss is equal to 0.6 ohms. Sorry, this should have be divided by C over F. So 0.6 ohms for our loss. Putting this together with the radiation resistance of the half wave dipole of R radiated to 73 ohms, the radiation efficiency of the half wave dipole is 73 over 73 plus 0.6, because the I naught square is canceled. So we're gonna get 0.99, or the if half wave dipole is 99% efficient. And this is much higher than the radiation efficiency of the short dipole. And this is why half wave dipoles and also quarter wave monopoles are so popular. Take out your in-class project notebook and made it, make a note about the efficiency and the impedance of a short dipole relative to a half wave dipole. To describe why it would be better to use a half wave dipole in a solution to our design challenge.